good day to all welcome to another session of dentistry and more today we will be discussing further about question paper discussion on oral radiology so the topics that will be discussed are these panoramic radiographs digital radiographs normal anatomy on intraoral and extraoral radiographs then followed by dental caries periodontal disease and the inflammation and infectious diseases so the first chapter we are going to speak about is the panoramic radiographs so the question that can be asked is the in short notes indications of oral so the indications are enlisted as further here it is used as a substitute for full mouth intraoral periapical radiographs it is used for evaluation of tooth development for the orthodontic purpose and also to cite and si- see the size of the lesions such as cysts tumors and developmental anomalies in the body and the rami of the mandible for any deduction of oral fractures as well as the middle third and the mandibular fractures after the facial trauma followed by the assessment of periodontal diseases then the developmental anomalies that i've already mentioned previously and also for assessment of the underlying bone diseases before construction of complete or the partial dentures so the next question that can be asked as short essay is the principle of a panoramic radiograph we have to draw a diagram with respect to this and you can refer from the textbook of uh, oral radiology by white faro in which they have given a beautiful diagram uh, representation in this when you're talking about the principle the principle of the panoramic radiograph is such that the x-ray tube head as well as the um, film is moved around the patient so the sta- patient is meant to be stationary so the x-ray moves around the patient's head in one direction while the film rotates in the opposite direction and the patient is seated or in a standing in a stationary position the movement of the tube head and the film produces an image through the process of tomography and this curvilinear variant on conventional tomography is also based on the principle of reciprocal forward movement of an x-ray machine or the x-ray source and the image receptor around a central point or plane which is called as the image layer so you can see here in this diagram there is a center of rotation where the patient's head is stationary and the x-ray tube head moves around one side of the patient and the receptor assembly moves towards the opposite side the image receptor slides past the collimator sequentially producing a latent image and there is a charged coupled device image receptor wherein there is a vertical charge coupled linear array behind the collimator it continuously reads out the exposure to produce an image next the question that can be asked is a as panoramic radiograph as such so once you start off with the answer you start off with the principle of panoramic radiograph which i have already previously mentioned with a diagrammatic representation followed by the procedure and how the procedure is done that is the patient is asked to wear a lead apron without the thyroid collar and load the panoramic film in the dark room and cover the bite block with a disposable plastic cover slip in the center the lower border of the mandible on the chin rest and at an equal distance from each side instruct the patient to sit or stand and with the back rest straight and erect and ask the patient to bite the by plastic bite block followed by the med sagittal plane of the patient should be perpendicular to that of the floor and instruct the patient to stand in such a way that the tongue is resting on the palate and ask the patient to remain still while the machine is rotating during exposure after the exposure is complete the film is subjected to routine processing so the common errors that are seen in the panoramic radiographs are the ghost images ghost images are nothing other than those uh, objects that are located between the x-ray source and the center of the rotation the this and ob- these objects can cast some ghost images so the ghost images can appear on the opposite side of the true anatomical location and at a higher level because of the upward inclination of the x-ray beam so in this there are other images such as that of the real images and double images and all which you can be reading it about in the chapter of pan- panoramic imaging and white and faro itself they have beautifully described what is real images what are the double images and the ghost images with the uh, radiographs given and then you can speak about the patient positioning errors the patient positioning errors that is based on the proper placement of the patient as well as the positioning within the focal trough which is necessary for the diag- diagnostic panoramic radiographs once 
it is out of the focal trough there are certain images and errors that can be seen such as that of the placement of the patient which is either uh, further anterior or too posterior for, to, in relation to the focal trough it results in certain aberrations in the images so once if it is too far it is found to be magnified in the meso distal dimensions so it looks like a fat teeth whereas if it is placed anterior the patient is positioned anterior in the focal trough it is found to have a reduced meso dimensional meso distal dimension in the anterior sextens so all these are the errors that can be enlisted cassette positioning errors also has been explained in this chapter itself we can read about and the indications i have already mentioned in the previous slide next is about the advantages and disadvantages of panoramic radiograph advantages is a simple procedure it is convenient for the patient and the patient dose is found to be low minimal when compared to that of the full mouth intraoral periapical radiographs and then it's found to be useful in patients with trismus as well as gagging problems and also the time is found to be minimal when compared to that of the full mouth intraoral periapical radiographs the disadvantages are found to be that there's a overlapping of the teeth in the bicuspid areas and also the areas of diagnostic interest outside the focal trough cannot be properly be visualized or it is poorly visualized and comparatively there is a poor diagnostic quality when that of compared of that of uh, full mouth intraoral periapical radiographs so the next chapter is about the digital radiographs in the digital radiographs chapter you can uh, refer again from the textbook of oral radiology by wyden faro where they have explained about all the sensors that are being used in the digital imaging so once the digital radiographs are such a question has been asked you have to mention what is digital radiograph is that method of capturing a radiographic imaging using a sensor breaking it into electronic pieces that is pixels and they are presenting and stored in the image as a you with the help of the computer so the methods that are found to obtain the intraoral digital image are the direct sensors and the indirect sensors as well as a storage for us for imaging so the methods that are used in to obtain the extraoral digital images are the photo stimulatable phosphor plates based uh, radiography and the charge coupled device systems so in each we have to explain about what is direct detectors and the indirect detectors direct detectors and the indirect detectors are found in the flat panel detectors so in direct detectors we use a photoconductive material that is selenium and uh, this is found to have a similar property of that of silicon in high atomic number which permits more efficient absorption of x rays under the influence of this the electrons that are freed during the x ray exposure of the selenium is conducted in a direct line to that of the underlying the thin transistor that is a thin film transistor detector element so in the indirect detectors what happens is that once the x ray photons or the x ray is been exposed to these uh, sensors what happens is that it is found to be sensitive to these detectors are found to be sensitive to visible light and it has an intensifying screen that is made of cesium uh, iodide and gadolinium oxysulfide which helps to convert the x ray energy to light and the performance of these devices is determined by the thickness of the intensifying screens so thicker the screens the more efficient and it allows more diffusion of light photons leading to a less sharper images so that is what is with the indirect conversion of the indirect detectors so we have to explain in this each of the uh, mechanism that is in related to the charge coupled device then the complementary metal oxide semiconductors flat panel detectors and the photo stimulatable phosphors so how the uh, how is it working the working principle of each of these has been explained well in the uh, with the diagrammatic representation in the textbook of oral radiology by white and farrow that you have to draw on this once it has been asked and then you have to speak about the advantages of the digital radiography over the conventional one so the advantages are found to be the superior grayscale resolution it is easily reproducible there is an increased speed of image viewing there is reduced exposure to radiation lower equipment and film cost and then there is an increased efficiency enhancement of the diagnostic images and also improves and has an excellent quality of the image the disadvantage is that the sensor is found to be thicker so it will be inconvenient for the patient to be placing the sensor within their mouth the image quality is found to be a source of debate when compared to that of 
the conventional radiographs and the initial setup is found to be more costly in the inpatient condo the sensor has to be covered with a pl- disposable plastic wrapper and there are also legal issues because the original digital image can be manipulated as such when it is being utilized so the next chapter is about the normal anatomy in intraoral as well as extraoral radiographs and in that the question that can be asked is the significance of lamina dura once the question has been asked we can speak about what is lamina dura it is nothing than the part of the alveolar bone that is surrounding the tooth socket which is thin layer of cortical bone which is found to be normally radio opaque which is found to be a cre- continuous band that covers the alveolar crest of the bone and it surrounds the tooth socket so when there is an increase in the occlusal stress the lamina dura is found to be more wider and denser around the roots of the tooth and there is a presence of lamina dura around the uh, root apex if there is a vital pulp if it is the vital pulp is absent that is if it is non vital this is found to be disappeared the condition that can be associated with the uh, lamina dura is the periapical lesion that you see in cases of periapical abscess periapical granuloma and cyst there is a loss or absence of lamina dura and in the periodontal d- diseases as such you might see a wider or a thicker lamina dura when there is an increased in the occlusal stress same goes with the orthodontic mo- tooth movement and in the external root resorption also you can see there is a continuous lamina dura that has been seen osteosarcoma and the squamous cell carcinoma mucoepidermal carcinoma traumatic bone cyst pages disease hyperparathyroidism of fibrous dysplasia and rickets in these conditions you might see the changes in the lamina dura so we have to know what are the con- all the conditions that are associated with the changes in the lamina dura as such when asked this question next chapter is about dental caries the question that can be asked is the radiographic features of the dental caries as well as the periodontal disease so the radiographic features of dental caries is such that the caries appears as a radiolucent areas so according to the severity and extent of the lesion it is divided into proximal caries where there in incipient proximal caries the early lesions just cannot be ex- seen and because of the extension of the more than the half of the thickness of the enamel should occur then only you can see there is some radiolucency around and such incipient proximal caries it appears as a classical triangle which is having a broad base at the tooth surface and spreading along the normal enamel rods in the moderate proximal lesions you will feel, see that it is involving more than all to half of the enamel but does not extend to that of the dentino enamel junction in the advanced proximal lesions these are found to be invading the dentino enamel junction which is found to be appearing as a second triangular radiolucent area in the dentin with the base at the dentino enamel junction and the apex of the triangle is directed towards the pulp chamber and the severe proximal caries you see that it is found to be penetrating more than half of the dentin and is approaching the pulp chamber so according to the location on the tooth pit and fissure caries that is occlusal caries when the severe occlusal caries are there you can see a radiolucent area which is involving the pulp and in the buccal facial lingual and the cervical areas it is found to be elliptical or semi lunar and the lesion enlarges so in buccal facial areas in the caries it is not detected in the intraoral periapical radiograph as you know that in the intraoral periapical radiograph is a 2d image not a 3d image so you can only detect the mesial as well as the distal caries or the occlusal caries as such and then the root surface caries you will see it appearing as an undefined saucer shape like crater or notched radiolucency and uh, re- recurrent caries or the secondary caries you see a radio opacity that is the restoration that is underlying the restoration or underlying the radio opacity you have the radiolucency then the rampant caries it is found to be an extensive intraproximal caries that are seen involving whole of the primary dentin so where it is appearing as a radiolucent structures and then you have the radiation caries which appears around the necks of the teeth and then pre eruptive caries which is found to be defects of the crowns of the developing dental teeth that are found evidently in the radiographic method next chapter is about the periodontal diseases when the radiographic features of periodontal diseases has been asked it can be divided into mild periodontitis moderate periodontitis and the severe periodontitis 
In the mild perinodidus, in the anterior region, it is found to be appearing as a blunting of the alveolar crust, whereas in the posterior, it is found to be the loss of the shape of the sharp angle between the lamina dura and the alveolar crust, with the loss of the cortical margin found, found to be as a rounded off with the irregular diffuse border. Moderate periodontitis, you see that there is a generalized horizontal erosion or a vertical or the angular defect that has been noted in the interdental area between the two teeth. Horizontal bone loss is nothing other than the loss of the height of the alveolar bone that is still horizontal or parallel to the occlusal plane. Whereas the vertical defects is found to be an oblique angulation of the alveolar bone in the area of the tooth that has been inward. So there are different craters and uh, defects that can be notified which has already been enlisted here and you can refer from the textbook of uh, oral radiology by White and Farrow under the chapter periodontal diseases where they have given all the uh, features, radiographic features that you see in each of these defects. So periodontal diseases chapter I have already mentioned earlier. What are the radiographic features for periodontal diseases? And next question that can be asked under this chapter is the role of radiography in the diagnosis of periodontal diseases. So you can use periapical radiographs, bite wings as well as the ortho graph that is your OPGs also can be utilized. Wherein in OPGs for the generalized periodontitis we can detect with the help of these radiographs. Bite wing and the periapical radiographs is found to be detecting for this localized areas or the uh, areas where you see there are kind of any horizontal or a, or a vertical bone loss has been detected interdentally that can be seen under these two radiographs. And then under the digital radiography you have something called as a digital subtraction radiography wherein there is a subtraction radiography and a densitometric image analysis which help to assess the subtle changes in the alveolar crustal bone pattern. So in this it allows the better deduction of any small amounts of bone loss that can be detected between the radiographs made at different times. So the evaluation of uh, periodontal therapy in this the radiographs plays an important role for the treatment of periodontal diseases. So by detecting the, these with the help of these radiographs you can find how much ever the bone loss is and based on that we can do the an assessment and analysis for the treatment plan. Next is the chapter about infections and inflammatory lesions and the systemic diseases affecting the jaws. Under this, the question that can be asked is the discuss the differential diagnosis of mixed radiolucent or the radiopic lesions of the jaws. Under this mixed lesions, you can divide the mixed lesion that is mixed lesion is nothing other than a radiopic as well as a radiolucent components as seen. Wherein in the radiopic component that is because of the deposition of mineralized tissue in that area where the normal bone is found to be removed and creating a space for the lesion that is the radiolucent area. So the mixed lesions can be divided into associated with the tooth and non-associated with the tooth. In the association with the tooth you have the pericoronal as well as the periapical. So in the pericoronal you have the odontome calcifying odontogenic cyst, calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor. Periapical, you have the calcifying crowns, the tooth uh, roots with the rarefying mastitis, rarefying and condensing mastitis. Then you have calcifying post surgical, then you have the peri osseous dysplasia and the cemento ossifying fibroma. Under those uh, lesions which are not associated with the tooth, you have the osteomyel, uh, you have the fibrous dysplasia, pages disease, then again osseous sarcoma, chondroma. Odontogenic myxoma, all these can be associated with, not associated with the tooth mixed lesions. Next, most favorite question to be asked is multilocular radiolucencies. Multilocular radiolucencies is nothing other than a locules that are seen within the lesion and um, classify the multilocular radiolucencies of the jaws and discuss the differential diagnosis of multilocular radiolucencies in the body of the mandible. So, once this question has been asked, there are Three types that is the soap bubble appearance, then the honeycomb pattern, and the tennis racket pattern. You can refer from the textbook by Wood and Goss in uh, Differential Diagnosis of Oral Lesions. In that book, they have already mentioned what are the multilocular radiolucencies as such, and how does this appear also soap bubble appearance, honeycomb appearance, and the tennis racket appearance, wherein you see the bony scepter that is found within the lesion, which forms these 
locules as well as you can see in tennis racket there is a scepter that is found to be at 90 degrees or the right angles to each other so the pattern that you see soap bubble appearance is seen in ameloblastoma botryoid cyst and the aneurysmal bone cyst honeycomb appearance is seen again in aneurysmal bone cyst ameloblastoma central hemangioma tennis racket is seen in odontogenic myxoma so this is how the lesions appear there is a multilocular radiolucency that has been seen in a normal pattern itself and the differential diagnosis that you can give is the odontogenic cyst that is odontogenic keratosis botryoid cyst glandular odontogenic cyst which can be given and the odontogenic tumors are the ameloblastoma odontogenic myxoma central and odontogenic fibroma you can see here in the honey uh, almost soap bubble appearance in the ameloblastoma and in the non neurodegenerative pathologies we have the aneurysmal bone cyst central giant cell granuloma fibrosis lesion such as that of cherubism next short note that can be asked is the radiography features in hyperparathyroidism you see that there is an overall demineralization of the skeleton resulting in the grayness as well as lack of normal contrast in the radiograph so there is a generalized osteoporosis with abortive attempts at repair as well as newborn formation so leading to a newborn uh, being resorbed and, and then leading to the pseudocyst formations so the a generalized form of the hyperparathyroidism that you see is the osteitis fibrosa cystica and uh, they are found to be localized of regions of bone loss produced by osteoclastic activity leading to a loss of all apparent bone structure and then the other name is the brown's tumor for hyperparathyroidism that is found in the later disease the density of the jaws is found to be decreased resulting in a radiolucent appearance and the teeth stand out in contrast so demineralization of the teeth of the cortical boundaries are found and also there is a change in the normal trabecular pattern leading to an appearance called as a classic appearance that is ground glass appearance and in the periapical radiographs you see there is a loss of lamina dura generalized form so we'll be continuing further for the next now session thank you